welcome back to Red Dot Radio. In today's episode, we are finally getting started with our series, Step Forward or Back, where we look at each division across the NFL and rank the teams within each division to determine will they finish better or worse compared to last year's results. To kick off this series, we are going to get started with the AFC South. Before we begin, I want to mention to please like this video and subscribe to the channel to help support us grow. So again, I think it's best that we kick off this series with AFC South. This is the Houston Texans flagship station. We are Houston Texans fans, so it only makes sense to start with the AFC South. As I'm flashing the rules to this segment on the screen, I just want to you know remind you, the first rule for step forward or back is the prediction order is made from last to best record from the previous year. So the Tennessee Titans will be ranked first and the Houston Texans will be, you know, predicted last since they had the best record in the division. Rule number two, each team must take a step forward or back. You cannot predict that the team will finish the same as last year. That takes all the fun out of it. And rule number three, each team could take a big step forward or a big step back. It doesn't just have to be a step forward or back. It can be a big step forward or back. And you'll see what I mean as we get started here. So we have the AFC South standings shown on the screen from last year. Tennessee Titans finished at six wins and 11 losses. So that is where we are going to start. With the Tennessee Titans, I predict they are going to take a step back. Now, I know a lot of Tennessee fans out there are extremely hurt by this prediction. It's like, what? We were in last place last year. We only had six wins. How are we going to be even worse this year? Well, let me explain why. First off, this is the first year in a while without head coach Mike Vrabel. So with coaching changes, you know there are going to be adjustments, not just on the offensive side, but also on the defensive side. You just can't escape it. Not to say that things couldn't get better, but things will be different. And I think Tennessee was used to operating on Frabel's schedule. The second big thing, and I think this could be, you know, number one in some people's eyes is why I think Tennessee is going to be worse this year. They are operating without running back Derrick Henry. Now, we know in the NFL, running backs are a commodity. And as they get older, people don't like to hold on to them. But we cannot deny that Derrick Henry, even at the age of 30, is still one of the premier NFL backs in the league. Just ask Baltimore, who picked him up with no problem. So, knowing that there's no more Mike Vrabel at head coach, no more Derrick Henry at running back to be your workforce, and essentially the best player on the team, I think Tennessee will be a shell of themselves. At most, they win four, five games. Um, And I'm being completely honest. I think they had some good wins last year, but I do believe a lot of their success was predicated on the threat of Derrick Henry, which allowed their receivers to get a little bit more open. Now I think there's going to be so much pressure on the Tennessee quarterbacks to make sure they get the ball out and they make the right choice. Um, So yeah, when I look at Tennessee, I truly think they're going to take a step back and I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not sold on Will Levis. I'm not sure if he is the guy for the future. I know they still have uh, Malik Willis on the roster as a backup, but um, a few things they do have going for them. Um, They do have uh, Calvin Ridley um, joining their roster, so I think that will be a huge help for them in the pass game. But again, teams like Houston, teams like Jacksonville, teams like Indianapolis within the division, they know the blueprint that Tennessee is going to run. They're going to try to throw it 50, 60 times a game, which means the defensive backs get to eat. Safeties get to headhunt. Linebackers and uh, D linemen get to just pin their ears back and rush. Um, You don't really have a threat running the ball at quarterback other than maybe uh, Malik Willis for the Tennessee Titans. So I believe Tennessee will be in last place in the AFC South. The next team to rank is the Indianapolis Colts. They finished 9-8 and eight last year with a winning percentage of .529. It matched the Jaguars. I believe the Indianapolis Colts are going to also take a step back. 
Now, as a Houston Texans fan, it's like, okay, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. He's a homer. He doesn't want those teams to do good. No, no, no. I genuinely believe there is a chance that the Colts do not get back to nine wins. Now, last year for the Colts, it was a very crazy year. They had a rookie quarterback, Anthony Richardson, who we all know is going to be their primetime player. But when he went down to injury, the team was essentially lost. They didn't know exactly who would be the guy, how it would work, what it would look like. But the team caught fire, went on a winning streak, and actually had themselves in a position to get into the playoffs. Now, things didn't work out for them when they faced the Houston Texans. But nevertheless, the Indianapolis Colts finished the season with high hopes. I am here to crush all of those hopes, and this is why. If Anthony Richardson gets injured again, the Indianapolis Colts have to start all over because it will show that their high draft pick, who is ultra athletic, cannot stay healthy. And if his health is an issue, you leave the team compromised because everyone is just going to predict that they're going to run the ball with Jonathan Taylor. It's not a bad, you know, game plan to have. I know Indianapolis has won a lot of games running the ball behind Jonathan Taylor, but I don't believe that the Indianapolis Colts can replicate what they did last year with this year's roster. They are going to have to have Anthony Richardson play all games at an elite level in order for them to step forward, and I just do not see that happening right now. Now, like I said, the Indianapolis Colts will still be a solid competitive team. I'm not going to put them in the same category as the Titans, but I do think they are going to struggle to get eight wins. I'm going to have them at seven wins. I think seven's a good total for the Colts, but hey, if Anthony Richardson is having an MVP-like season, which as a Texans fan, I hope he doesn't, we may have to revisit this prediction. So again, Colts taking a step back. Halfway through the list for the AFC South, we are now moving to the Jacksonville Jaguars. This team last year finished at 9-8, and eight, tied with the Colts, but had a completely different year than all the other teams in the division. Jacksonville started off last season undefeated, one of the best records in the league, and then just could not buy a win for almost six to eight consecutive weeks where it was just loss after loss after Trevor Lawrence injury after Kirk. Uh, uh, Christian Kirk injury after there were just so many things that went wrong for the Jaguars in their pursuit to a playoff game. How will they fare this season? I believe Jacksonville is going to take a step forward. This is scary to me because I know that Jacksonville is a good team. Jacksonville is a team that is not too far removed from not only being in the playoffs, but winning a playoff game. Now, There's still a lot of questions that some people may have about Trevor Lawrence. I know he's fine. I know he's a he's a player. He's gonna be good. He's gonna, you know, change his approach to the season. His numbers are gonna look better compared to last year. That's all good. But I am concerned, or the thing that makes me have belief in the Jacksonville Jaguars this year is their defense. They have a lot of great defensive players returning. A lot of good guys in the middle at linebacker and defensive line, as well as some athletes to go on the edges. And if there was any team in the AFC that I would predict could match up well with the Houston Texans, it would be the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think they have a comparable head coach. I think they have a comparable quarterback and they have a comparable defense. Three things you need in order to make a legitimate run for the Super Bowl. So my prediction is that the Jacksonville Jaguars is going to take a step forward and I believe they are going to get to 10 wins. That's going to be huge, though it's only one more than last year's total. I think that one more is going to have them right in the mix of playoff conversation where last year it just was too little too late. So the moment we've all been waiting for, the last team in the AFC South for the Step Forward or Back series. The Houston Texans, which won the division last year with 10 wins and 7 losses. How will they finish this year? You already know. They're going to take a step forward. I believe the Houston Texans will be better this season than they were last season. 
This is why. The Houston Texans are going to be better because we have addressed a lot of big needs this offseason. Not only did we get another receiver in Stephon Diggs, but we got a top-notch defensive pass rusher and Daniil Hunter from the Minnesota Vikings. Daniil Hunter is going to be the X factor for the Houston Texans this season. You heard it here first, and let me say it again. Daniil Hunter, defensive lineman, is going to be the X factor for the Houston Texans this season. If he can replicate the season he had last year in Minnesota, being top three in sacks, top three in defense efficiency, all those good defensive line numbers, hits on the quarterback, pass breakups, all that stuff as a defensive lineman causing havoc, the Texans' job will be so much easier than they can ever plan for. Because the Houston Texans' offense is going to be good. Let's just put that out there. Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Schultz at tight end, Joe Mixon, We have players. C.J. Stratt at quarterback, obviously, duh. We have players. We are going to legitimately be able to put up 28 to 35 points a game. With the return of Will Anderson, Derek Stingley Jr., Petrie, guys that we know can ball, and we add in a top three defensive line rusher, I'm here to say the Houston Texans are going to take a step forward, and they will win at least 11 games. The Houston Texans are going to win the division again, and I think the only team that will be able to compete with them will be the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, we have the full list. We know where teams are going to fall. Essentially, I didn't predict anything too much, you know, too different than how last year's results played out, but I just believe the teams that are going to take a step forward in Jacksonville and Houston have people returning, and things to prove. Now, Indianapolis also has things to prove with Anthony Richardson, but that's one man. And I'm going to be completely honest, the entire Colt season, I believe, is going to be placed on Anthony Richardson's shoulder. If he can ball out, they will be better than I predict. If he can't stay healthy or is just a better athlete than he is a ball distributor, and decision maker, well then the Colts will not finish as good as they were last year. And they will be searching for the next thing to come this offseason. So that wraps up this first series edition of Step Forward or Back. We have the final results here on the screen. I want to know your thoughts out there. Do you think this is how the AFC South is going to finish this year? If your favorite team is on this list, Comment below. Tell me what you think. I am super excited to see the engagement. Again, we're going to go through each division across the NFL and make sure that we get our prediction. Next episode, we are going to focus on the NFC South. So for this episode, the AFC South, we're about to wrap it up. Until next time, peace.